Hey friends, before we begin the episode, I want to remind you that my next six-week course begins on February 21st. Registration opens on January 19th and closes one week afterwards. I will be hosting a free webinar on Wednesday, January 19th with a Q&A to describe the course and answer any questions you might have. For more information, visit holisticlifenavigation.com. Now let's get back to the episode. On today's episode, I navigate the difference between capacity and desire. Welcome to the Holistic Life Navigation Podcast. I am your host, Luis Mujica. I was sick and depressed until I discovered that I could make music, and then my whole life transformed because I began learning how to listen more deeply, listen to life, to the people around me, and to my body. And that's when I realized that the body speaks through sensations, and learning this new language meant relearning my body and mind. I soon healed myself of many chronic conditions, and then began teaching others how to do so as well. Holistic Life Navigation combines nutrition, self-inquiry, and somatic experiencing to help you release stress and trauma just by listening to your own body. This podcast serves as a place to share my experiences, as well as the experiences of many others who have healed and are healing through unique, unorthodox, and unusual ways. Your time to learn begins now. Capacity is the reality of my physical body. Expectations and desires are what my mind thinks should be happening or what I want. Expectations are not real or present, they are projected onto the future. We leave our reality, we leave our bodies for them, and then we compare our reality to them. Leaving our reality for them looks like pushing through. I don't relate to my current reality, my body, and my environment. So I bypass those boundaries in me to accomplish a task that I deem more valuable than this moment I'm in, or more valuable than my well-being in this moment. Honoring my capacity is the opposite. It's a practice of relating to where my body is, not where I want it to be. Witnessing and responding to its exhaustion, its despondence, its excitement, or its fear without judgment, just noticing. Letting it show me what's possible instead of stimulating it with caffeine and rewards to get through and for getting through. Our society is built upon the expression of pushing through and fighting. What if we stopped? What would it even look like or feel like to honor our capacity and normalize the ritual of checking in and then responding to the current state inside of us, moving from? the state inside of us. There's a mystery, a spontaneity, and humility in that. It's the ability to feel secure in saying, I'm not running the show, something else is, and riding the current of wherever that is. I spoke about this the other night with a group, and I just found it to be so important to share here with you all, because so many of our problems in life don't come from us being weak or lazy, or self-sabotaging. They come from not having an embodied experience. And what that really means is not having the felt sense of noticing when my body is constricted, or expanded, or numb. Why, Luis, do I want to know if my body is constricted, or numb, or expanded? Because these sensations are the language of the body. These sensations are actually the expressions, the fruiting bodies of the subconscious, of the shadow, of the parts that we're not in touch with. To be able to feel the sensation of overwhelm somewhere in my body and really listen to it means I get in touch with my current capacity. Again, capacity equals space. Do I have enough space inside of me to experience something? If my chest is tight, if my shoulders are pulling up to my ears, if my breath is shallow, my body is physically and sensationally showing me that it is in a low capacity state. If I bypass that, push through that, 
or simply don't even notice that's happening, then I take on activities, relationships, tasks, and even go forward towards certain goals that my mind wants with a body that's unable to tolerate it. It being the charge. Charge is non-dual. Charge is the... um, You can feel it right now, actually, if you take a breath. If you notice your body, you can feel that life in you. You might feel pleasure. You might feel pain. You might feel joy. You might feel tired. You might feel excited. You might feel scared. All of these emotions, they have charge, don't they? They have a physical life force energy that runs through the body, definitely on different levels. But charge is non-dual. It's non-binary. It enters our body when we're excited. It enters our body when we're terrified. And that's the most important thing to understand here. When we take away the duality of charge, we understand everything in life brings a charge. So if I'm to do something that brings a high amount of charge into my body, and my body is not able to receive that, then I'm going to have certain expressions to counter the effects. I might get a migraine. That's how my body might stop me from doing something it doesn't have capacity for. I might get really irritable and passive aggressive or snap at somebody. That's how my body expresses feeling really overwhelmed and constrained. I might spend all the money I just made because I'm too uncomfortable holding a certain amount. I might be losing weight or healing a rash or feeling good in my body, and then I eat something that doesn't feel good in my body because the charge of feeling good is uncomfortable. This is why I don't believe in self-sabotage. Self-sabotage is simply our word for something my body or I do in response to overwhelm, in response to giving myself a break. Oh, I worked so hard all these years to go on tour as a musician, then I sabotaged it. I went out, I went drinking, I got sick, I had to cancel all my shows. Okay, in the world of logic, yeah, I sabotaged it. In the world of somatics, I saved myself. I didn't have capacity to do these shows. I didn't have the physical room in my mind and body to take on that lifestyle. So... I subconsciously or consciously chose something that would interrupt that. It gave me a pause. It gave me a break. And in that break, some space was created. And simultaneously, maybe some grief because I'm upset that this thing didn't work out that I always wanted. I find this to be so important because most of us live our lives disembodied. We don't know how to relate or speak or listen. We don't know how to nurture and witness and notice these things inside of us. What we tend to do is we either try to get rid of them, we mask them with food or drugs or medication or television, or we simply completely judge them. What's wrong with me? I'm weak because I want to sleep. I'm lazy because I can't spend another hour looking at my emails. So what if we stopped bypassing them or muting them? And what if we stopped judging them? What's the other option? The other option is to sit with them. Well, we can't sit with them unless we have what? Capacity. (laughs) So all this work comes down to creating more space in your body. And I'm going to lead us with a a wonderful exercise that I love. Um, But right before I do, I, I guess I want to just reiterate one more time. Desire and wants, and goals, and expectations. Nothing wrong with them. I love fantasizing about the future. It lights me up. And I have this practice of noticing when I see this thing in my mind that I'm saying I want, I can check in with my body to see if my body also wants it. Our minds are not from the physical realm. They come from somewhere else that's so mysterious no one has ever figured it out fully which means they're not constrained by nature's laws. They don't have, they don't bump into things. <laughs> they don't have physical boundaries. They are infinite. And that's why so many of us have anxiety 
and depression and overwhelm. Because this infinite mind is kind of terrorizing a very finite body. The body of physical being that has physical boundaries, that gets thirsty, that has to go to the bathroom, that has to sleep, that laughs, that gets hurt when it hits a wall or hits an object. So these two beings sharing space, the being of the body, the being of the mind, they're from two different realms. They speak two different languages. They have two different mm, practical ways of moving through, right? So when we talk about desire, even a beautiful desire, like I desire to be more loving to my partner, you still have to ask, okay, on paper, this is great. On paper, it's going to work. On paper, it's important. What's my body capable of? When I think of being kinder to my partner, how does my body respond? Does it constrict? Does it expand? Does it light up? We want to do this check-in. And by doing this check-in, it doesn't mean we stop our desires. It doesn't mean we throw out our goals. It doesn't mean we quit our businesses or leave our relationships. It means we take everything moment by moment based on our body's capacity. And this is counter to everything in our culture. So I understand there's also a level of privilege of how deeply you're able to do this based on your responsibilities and your lifestyle and your circumstances. So instead of action, like actually doing or not doing something, we can all start with this exercise of just getting in touch with our capacity. So let's begin the exercise. The first thing we want to do is notice how our bodies experience what our minds desire. So just think of something you desire, something you want, something maybe you wanted and got and didn't work out even, and maybe you still want it. Really see it in your mind's eye, this thing you desire. It can be as small as I'm going to cook dinner tonight. It can be as big as I want to move to another country. I want to come out as gay. I want to um, transform my life in some way, whatever it is. Really see it in your mind's eye. See how you fantasize it. See the images. And notice what your body's doing right now. Is your body constricting in response to this? Is your body expanding in response to this? Is it numb in response to this? I'm going to break down these terms. Constriction can also be stress. It can be pain. It can be tightness. It can be a rush of anxiety. It can be shallow breathing, discomfort, tension. This is all under the term constriction. So notice when I think about this desire, does my body do any of those things? And I'm not even talking about full body. I'm talking about parts of the body. So notice your head, your neck, your shoulders, your chest, your belly, your hands, your pelvis, your legs, your feet. Really check out all the parts as we do this exercise. And again, when you think about this desire, does any part of you constrict? And just notice it. Don't try to get rid of it. Just let it, yourself be with it. When you think about this desire, does any part go numb? Meaning, oh, I don't feel it. Meaning there's a pressure there, but I can't really figure out a sensation. Meaning, oh, there's a heaviness and I don't want to move. I feel frozen. Does any of that happen anywhere in your body? Numb can also show up by dissociating. Do I suddenly zone out? Do I lose track of myself? Do I lose my body? Right? That's all under numb. And then expans expanded would be, I feel peace. I feel good, warm, lovely desire. I feel open. I feel excited. I feel happy. I feel pleasure. Softness. That's all under expansion. So one more time, look at that desire in your mind's eye and notice what do you feel in your body? You might feel one of each somewhere else. The chest might be tight. The stomach might be open. The feet might be numb. That, that happens a lot. So just scan the body. By scanning the body and understanding these specific sensations in certain areas, you're getting in touch with your capacity, your body's capacity for this desire. So if I desire to travel to Puerto Rico, let's say, I'm checking with my body and I'm noticing, hmm, 
my chest feels so open. It's like I'm getting a hug, okay? There's a lot of capacity in my chest for this trip. Oh, my stomach feels really tight. So something in my stomach is, is constricting, defending itself against the idea of going. Hmm, my legs feel like they're here. My hands feel a little weightless. I don't really feel my hands. Just by scanning like that, I'm able to find what parts of me want this, what parts of me don't in my body. Over time, I get to sit with the parts that don't. I check out the hands, I check out the belly. I get to know what are they thinking? What are they afraid of? What are they not looking forward to about this trip? And then as I do this, I build capacity for the trip. And then I'm in line with the desire Then it happens pretty easily, right? There isn't a lot of uh, divided will, as Carolyn Elliott would put it. There's not a lot of tension. There's not a lot of self-sabotage or angst within me. Now, everyone prop themselves up in a way that feels comfortable. If you're driving, please pause and do this when you're not, because you don't want to be in control. That's the part, part of this exercise. The best way to do this is to lay in bed or sit up with a pillow behind your neck. So you want every part of your body to be held. You don't want anything holding itself up. Let the arms fall, let the legs be held, let your butt and back be held, especially your neck and head. Let them just sit back and be held. And really indulge in the parts that expand here. Indulge in the part that, that feels comfortable, the part that feels calm, the part that feels rested, the part that feels gooey and nice and safe. And find where that is in your body. Again, it might be all over. It might be one area, it might be several. Just notice. And from this, these places that feel safe, these places that feel expanded, these places that feel rested, from them, you want to notice, what do they want to do? What does that part want to do? Does it want to just lay here? Does it want to get up and make the bed? Does it want to eat something? Does it want to get a hug? Someone in the... the, the group I did the other night said that it wants to build a fire. When you go into these parts that have capacity already, these parts that are open, these parts that feel safe, we're noticing then, what do I have capacity for? This is the opposite of the first exercise. The first exercise was what's my desire and how does that desire affect my body? That's part one, which then helps you understand why that desire doesn't come to fruition or why it quote gets sabotaged each time. If my body feels stressed in response to this desire, obviously the, de the desire is not going to work out long term because my body is constricting against it. The charge from this thing you desire is too much for your body. The second part, the exercise we're in right now, is without desire, what's my capacity in this moment? What's my physical state in this moment of safety and comfort and openness? And from that state, what does my body want to do to nourish that state even more? What I find beautiful when I do this exercise with people is most of the things your bodies will show you have nothing to do with growth. They have nothing to do with building. They have nothing to do with achievements. They have to do with restoration and nurturing usually. Again, common things. I want to hug somebody. I want to cuddle. I want to listen to music, build a fire, go for a walk really nurturing things, things that expand our capacity. By checking in with our body's capacity first and then following its desires, we naturally start with what our reality is capable of starting with. If all I have in me is to go for a walk, that's where I begin. And guess what? By going for a walk, I honor my capacity and through honoring it, I actually build more of it. So then maybe I'll want to look at my emails for an hour. And I'll notice in real time while I'm reading my emails when I lose capacity for reading my emails. Instead of grabbing for a coffee, eating a chocolate bar, skipping lunch and working through that and creating a lot of adrenaline, I listen to it. By listening to the body, we stop breaking the body's boundaries, which come in the form of sensation. Constriction is how the body says no. And if I'm not versed in that language, I'm going to consistently 
push through and violate that boundary of my body until I become ill or have physiological issues or syndromes or chronic pain or negative relationships or addictions. All those things have to come out. They are all healthy responses to a lifetime of breaking the body's boundaries. But because the body doesn't speak through language, it speaks through sensation, which is almost invisible until you create an embodiment practice. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. My question for you is, where do you feel the episode? Take a breath and just notice, what's your body doing right now? Sit with it, let it speak to you, and let whatever comes up, come up. And your only job is to listen, for all the wisdom you need is right inside of you. To learn more about my work, you can visit holisticlifenavigation.com and sign up for my mailing list. You'll receive a bi-weekly newsletter with specific monthly topics, free resources, and upcoming events. You can also follow me on Instagram. If you like my podcast, please leave a review and share.